Take a look at Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Mario Golf Toadstool Tour for the GameCube. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic for the Xbox. And Downhill Domination for the PlayStation 2. We're gonna start off then with Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. Well, hold on right there. We got Jedi Academy, Knights of the Old, Star Wars, Dark Force, Republic, Galaxy thing. There's well, been what a is, few Star Wars games what is this in there. Stuff? If you like Jedi Knight 2, you're gonna enjoy a lot of the stuff in this game. Now, what if you didn't like Jedi Knight 2? Well, then you probably can not watch this review or listen to what Tommy's got to say. The thing with Jedi Knight 2 is that it, it used the Quake 3 engine and it had a very cool sort of, uh, you know, Star Wars RPG vibe, but there was also some great lightsaber battling in the game and some force powers. Right. This game really concentrates on lightsaber battling. Yes. Do you get the Darth Maul dual bladed lightsaber How about thing two lightsaber that's action. the coolest thing in the game you can actually throw one and still keep battling with the other and then grab the the other one when it comes back i like going up to the little jawas right and 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 you hit them with your lightsaber they're screaming and wailing and yeah. ducking for cover and, and this and freak is just wailing on whale on jawas i like right. to be able to choose the color of my lightsaber that's insane now, why like I, I choose a cool green right. why did you choose the pink one pink's cool Pink's, Pink's fierce, man. Dude's got a pink lightsaber. You're not playing as Kyle Katarn in this game as you have in the, in, the, in the previous... How dare they! <laughs> ...the previous Jedi Knight games. This time, it's all about customizing your own character and sort of telling your own story as you go through the game. You're named Jaden Kaur, and they chose that name so that you could choose a female or a male character and they have different voices depending on what sex you choose. You're on your way to the academy and Luke Skywalker's teaching all the Jedis to be, you know, good Jedi people. Bad stuff happens and there's a whole plot line and a big story, a central story, but you can also go on these side missions. You got, of course, all the great John Williams music, great sound effects. Oh. You have stuff that takes place on just sounds cold, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very chilly. And you get to actually ride a Tauntaun. Wouldn't it be funny if the Tauntaun just looked like took a intergalactic space dump right there in the snow, and you could step in that? You could also hop into an ATST and drive around one of those big things and blast away at stormtroopers. There's a lot of jumping in this. Yes. And it's it's either first person or third person perspective. Right. It's, it's kind of hard to do these jumping puzzle things. I didn't, you almost slide around too much. The controls are good, yeah. but not my bag that's, of tea. That's one of the... My bag of tea? <laughs> my cup of tea? <laughs> my tea bag. I don't know what that is. I've never heard bag of tea. You never heard the bag of tea line? The environments all look pretty cool, but definitely the game is more suited for interiors than exteriors. The exteriors are a little bit creaky. This is still using well, Quake 3 engine, and the graphics, right, the, they're not that great. In multiplayer, you get to choose from a whole bunch of different characters. I'm giving it a 7.5. I'm going to give it an 8.5. I really enjoyed myself with this game. On the positive side, this game has all that Star Wars presentation we all know and love. It's not just a shooter game. You actually can jump onto a Tauntaun, speeder bike, and ATST. Very cool stuff there. But my favorite part about the game is the lightsaber combat and being able to play as Boba Fett in multiplayer. Don't forget to mention the Jawa killing. Right, and the Jawa killing. On the negative side, the graphics don't stand up to most newer PC games out in the market today. In some of the jumping puzzles, it's sometimes difficult to control. And even though it's a fun game to play, because it kind of used a little dated technology, it almost seemed like an expansion pack. We're going to switch now from Star Wars and Deep Space Combat to golfing with cute characters. This is Mario Golf Toadstool Tour for the GameCube. It didn't really feel that different from the N64 Mario well, Golf Well, no game. kidding. I love that game on the N64, <laughs> and I was really looking forward to it. What were you to... expecting? I thought that it was just too 
too boring and bland and vanilla, you know? I was just... What were you expecting? It's Mario Golf! I wanted it to be crazier. I wanted there to like, be... I thought... Giant, like... giant things that are chasing Mario as he's got a golf. And, <laughs> okay. And, you know, like crazy cartoon stuff, and there wasn't enough of it. Sure. You do get some of that if you play through all these tournaments, Well, that's but... the thing. The thing that bugged me is that I would have liked the environments to be a lot more exciting. That's like what if, you, I'm if, you, if you're gonna do an unrealistic I don't want just golf grass game. Grass and trees and stuff. Right. Yeah. Have, have we one get, course like we that. We get that in, in Tiger Woods game. The thing that annoys me about the game though the most is the putting. And it shows you like all the angles and contours of the green, which is good. Right. But then when you actually go to putt, the camera will stay on the character a lot of times. So you never get to see what you're doing right or wrong with right. the putt. It right. just ends up It'll show the ball like, oh, you didn't make it in. I had, like, a, I had what? a, I had a problem with the putting as well because the the button tap is really sensitive, and you have to. Yes. It's one of those golf games where you have to tap it once to get the cursor going, and then again when you need it to hit right at the exact spot. If you've got a tiny little putt to make, it's very difficult to hit that button twice and get that tiny little tap into the into the putt. <laughs> I really like the way that the characters look in this game, too. That's really well rendered, really nice, sharp 3D, very clean looking graphics. Lots cool around. intro. Very round, very, very colorful. Love that Donkey Kong only uses one of his giant arms to, to hit the ball with. I thought that was pretty cool. What is up with Waluigi, though? Is that not the lamest character that you know? Been? You know, I don't like that guy. I, I never like... liked the guy. I, I'm not even going to mention his name. You don't really? He doesn't deserve that respect. While Luigi talks to the hand, is that what you're saying? That's basically it. I like Wario. I think Wario is a great character, but War while Luigi is Wario is, is a throwaway. I love Wario. Wario's dumb. You want to go? <laughs> Look, it's, I, it's I all Wario. about Yoshi, dude. Yeah, Yoshi's cool. When you do a perfect swing with Yoshi, you get this nice, pretty rainbow. I know it's cute. It's very cute. I, I like Peach too in this game. She's cool too. She starts you humming. Would. Humming the Mario theme song. Well, let's talk about that. Now, sometimes in the music, you hear the Mario theme, which yeah. I thought was really cool. But for crying out loud, are you guys serious? Can you please even think about maybe for once using some real instruments? Yeah. fits the game. But I'm talking about the production quality. Right. Sounds like it was done on a Super Nintendo. Could've Come been, on. Could have been nicer. Come on. Ab absolutely. Come on. I, there are and that one footstep sound. Oh, come when on. There's no oh, okay. footsteps. I'm just kidding. There's... When somebody else is playing, if you're playing multiplayer, right. you can tap any of the buttons I and like, like menus will come up. So I'm just sitting there screwing you up. I'm going to give Mario Golf Toadstool Tour a 7 out of 10. I give it a 7 as well. On the positive side, this game is extremely easy to control and get into. Fun for the whole family. The art is very colorful and dynamic, so the characters look really cool. And hey, we's got Yoshi. On the negative side, we found some problems with the putting. The music fit in the game, but the production value was really shoddy. But the biggest problem with Mario Golf is that it just doesn't feel like enough of an improvement over the N64 game. After the break, we've got more Star Wars for you with Knights of the Old Republic. Stick around. I like your shirt. Thanks, pal. It's green. Yes. You look like the Hulk. The game, it's called Advance Wars 2. It's for the Game Boy Advance SP. And I can't stop playing this damn thing. Basically, what we've got here is a turn-based strategy game. Don't change the channel. Turn-based strategy games can be fun. You have a whole bunch of units at your command, and what you've got to do, of course, is destroy your enemies and take over their bases and beat up all of their weapons. There's some multiplayer capability in here, so you can play with up to four people at the same time, which is really cool. There's a whole campaign scenario type thing with all kinds of great little story bits thrown in there. And what they've done to this one, as opposed to the original Advance Wars, which was also one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games, they've added a whole bunch of new units to this thing now. So you've got all kinds of, like, big cannons and laser guns. And the other cool thing, too, is they've added all kinds of new commanding officers. Each of these commanding officers, by the way, has a whole bunch of special powers, and they're all unique depending on who you choose. My favorite guy is this old warrior guy, and his special power 
is to pop up extra units on all the bases that you take over. So you, all of a sudden you get this whole influx of new units in your army, which is which really comes in handy. Advance Wars 2 for your Game Boy Advance and the Game Boy Advance SP, 9.5 out of 10. Awesome game. All right, we're back and we're back to Star Wars. We're gonna talk now about Knights of the Old Republic. This is developed by BioWare and LucasArts, and it's for the Xbox. What do you think of this one? Well, everybody's hyped up about this game. It's a this huge hit. An extremely popular game. You go online, you'll see reviews of nines and tens all over the place. And you hated it. No, I didn't hate it. I like the fact that you can build up different abilities, and I, I like the acting and the characters, the lightsabers and the blasters. I liked all that stuff. Sounds like we got a great game here. <laughs> no? The one thing I hated about this game... What's that? Which kind of, you know, kind of ruined a lot of the experience for me. This is a strategy game, it's a role-playing game, but it's all turn-based, and that's my biggest problem. You're not actually controlling the character or fighting. All you're doing, it's like Pokemon. All you do is you tell it what to do. Like, I want to block, or I want to attack with my lightsaber, or I want to shoot. So you get a turn, and then you sit there, and then the other player gets a turn, and you sit there. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that these games were created because they didn't have the capability to do 3D and to control the characters in all these awesome environments. Well, guess what? We are in the 21st century now, last time I checked. Why couldn't you? You're talking about two different gameplay styles. You're talking about being in no. control and talking about an action-adventure game. And this is a role-playing yeah, game. Yeah, you're in control. Game. This yeah. is a role-playing game where your decisions are not based on hacking and slashing. So you're saying that the game wouldn't have done any justice if you could actually control it. They decided to go in this direction because it offers a different kind of gameplay, which is more strategic, it's which not, is more of a thinking person's game. Absolutely not. Pressing a button... It isn't and, about and, that. And it's pressing a, a button and waiting to see what happens. You're deciding what team members are going to be on the offensive based on what you see on the opponent's side, and it's a tactical strategy which, which action never, game. Which never really happens, because it's always whatever player you have you're the main character. And if you love these style of games, you are absolutely gonna love this game. I'm not telling people out there that they're crazy for liking this game. Yes, you I'm are. Just tell no, I'm just warning people out there, if you're like me and you don't like turn-based role-playing games, stay away and avoid this one because... Open it, your it, minds. It, if you've never tried anything like this, this, oh, is, this oh, is the game to but try. But you won't open your mind when I say I like no, a good listen. fishing game or a horse racing game. You won't open your mind to that. No, because... So those, open your those, mind those are, if you like those, this. Those are mini games. One of my favorite parts of the game is the fact that you can kind of go down this path of being on the dark side or, you know, the light side. It's awesome. You know? And uh, me personally, I, of course, you know, went straight for the dark side. Said all the negative things. All the negative rude things. I was rude to people. That kind of stuff is very, very I clever, like convincing man. people to come over to the dark side. Yes. So I say to you, you should come over to the dark side man, I love and not this game. like turn based games like me. Oh, that give me is a break. the dark side. That is I guess. the dark side. <laughs> as much as I love this game, there are a couple of quibbles that I have with it. I do wish, you do have a lot of movement and freedom of movement in the game. And I do wish that you could jump over obstacles that are like a foot off the ground. I also wish that the load times weren't so prevalent and so long. So I guess you can't give it a 10 then? No, I'm giving it a 10. 10 out of 10, fantastic game, great job, Bioware. I'm telling you like it is, it's a great game, but I'm giving it a 7.5. On the positive side, this game offers one of the most compelling stories in any video game. The voiceover acting, the sound effects, the music, the whole Star Wars presentation, incredible. But definitely the best part about Knights of the Old Republic is the different paths you can take in the light or dark force. On the negative side, for those of you out there who do not like turn-based combat games, you may want to avoid this one. Now, the load times, especially for an Xbox game, seem a bit excessive. And finally, where's R2 and Chewie? Well, speaking of turn-based combat, We've got a controller now for the Xbox to talk about that really has nothing to do with turn-based combat at all. This is the Pelican Trick controller, and it's built specifically for all of you fighting game fans out there that love to, uh, well, to cheat. So when you're playing those turn-based combat games, you can program in that left and, and enter. 
It's got the cool X logo on the front, kind of looks like the X-Men sort of insignia, but it's not. It's got the combo feature. The Trick Controller actually came out before the Controller S, but yes. it was a lot similar to it. The old Trick Controller, though, had the four big round buttons in the cross. This particular one, though, the new model, doesn't have that. Once again, these controller companies must not do any research whatsoever and ask game players anything, because right. I've never met a game player who said, put all the buttons right next to each other. Right. It does this, and it off-centers them, so they're on, a, uh, they're on a diagonal. Also, the black and the white buttons are too far up on the thing, so you have to take your thumb off of the right analog thumb. And the normal S controller, like the start and pause, yeah. they're like over to the I left. Know. But on this controller, they're in the middle, like yeah. the PlayStation. The price is about 25 bucks, which I think is still, it's probably a little bit steep, considering that you can now pick up the controller S, and I think that's a better controller for your Xbox. I'm not gonna recommend this one. Are you gonna recommend it? Unfortunately, no. On the positive side, the Trick controller is a little bit smaller than the original Microsoft Xbox controller. It's got that cool X insignia on the front. That always looks swell. And for all you people that love to cheat in your fighting games, it does have the programmable buttons and that one combo switch. On the negative side, the four important buttons are right next to each other and off-center on a diagonal. For those of you used to the black and white buttons down lower, these are actually on top. And finally, the price point isn't really that competitive. All right, we're gonna head to the hills next for a look at downhill domination for the PlayStation 2. It's coming up right after this. Let's talk about Star Fox 64 for the Nintendo 64. Star Fox 64 succeeds. I love the uh, the four-player mode. I think that's that playing against your buddies is is really cool. And I do like the different levels when it goes into the 3D mode and you're you're doing the dog fights with all the, the better pilots out there. I think that's the best part in Star Fox. I'd give it an eight and a half. I had to like uh, get out my sword to cut off all the cheese on this game. I mean, Star Fox 64 is a great game, but you got your slippies and your, your crappies and happy and doofy. And here, here's a game that they could have made so sci-fi and so cool, but they but they threw all these frog characters and all this stuff in. Some of the effects graphically, the explosions and everything are are excellent. I I've never seen. Yeah, exactly. And and I've never seen explosions like that in, in games before, I give it an 8.3. Hey, that was my gallop. Because I'm talking about Gallop Racer 2001. I've got to tell you, this is amazing. I mean, the 3D graphics are incredible, right? But you can go into this whole career mode where you, you buy your horses and you have all these different horses in the stables. There's over 1,500 horses to unlock. Imagine if there were over 1,500 girls to unlock in Extreme Beach Volleyball. I wouldn't be here doing this right now, I can tell you that. There's all sorts of different tracks and conditions and mud and grass, and you know, you really have to be smart. I mean, this is really sort of like an RPG in a lot of ways. You gotta, you know, make sure your, your horses are fed and getting the right attention and the right jockeys riding at the right time. The thing they added in this year's version, though, was that you could even gamble now on your own horses and stuff to make money that way. So it's all about collecting money and running races. This is the most realistic horse simulator out there, but it's unbelievable. If you love racing games, you got it. If you like RPGs, it's in here. This got amazing stuff. If you like girls, get Extreme Beach Volleyball. But if you're into horses, if that's your thing, then you're gonna love Gallup Racer 2001 from Tecmo for the PlayStation Deuce. All right, we're gonna talk now about downhill domination. He's That's going up, he's up, going up Bill. For the PlayStation 2, this one's from Sony. And what'd you think of this one, man? These are the guys who did Twisted Metal That's for right. Sony. Uh, so now they're working and with War of the thing. Monsters. War of the Monsters, hey. This game, although it doesn't look anything like those two games, no. uses the same engine. This is extreme, so it's not like realistic downhill racing, no. No. Oh, no. It's more like, you know, totally wacky, like SSX style stuff. But I like this game way better than SSX. The graphics are in 
incredible. Yeah, they, they take are. you all over the place, from Vancouver to Italy. The Hawaii levels are incredible. Unbelievable. Man. They have lightning effects yeah. that come down and burn stuff while the forest stuff fire on fire. will start up, and yep. you'll have rock slides. And then in Hawaii, there's like this giant lava field, and there's all these sort of telescope observatory things that you're bouncing over. There's yep. helicopters all over the place. The best thing is the animals in this game. They're I mean, wicked. They, there's bears. There's bunnies. Big rams running up. Yaks. The, yaks. I mean, there's not. And the great thing is, is that you can actually, you can, you can, you can kick in this game. Yes. I gotta tell you, you ever kick a yak in the ass? There's also pedestrians. Lots of climbing. Ooh. People that are just walking Kicking, yep. up the hill. I'm trying. walking up the hill. Booge! Not anymore. Yeah. You're falling off the cliff. You can do all kinds of stunts and tricks in the game, and you need to because you have to. You get a little power-up boost or something like that, and you also earn the ability to have better sort of weapons. Like you'll you'll move up from a punch to a kick, and then you'll have a stick. Throwing the <laughs> bottles is the best part of the game. Like throwing the bottles at people. As, just as you're coming across the, the finish line and, and somebody's beating you, throw a bottle on them, they fall off to the side and you whip right past. That's a lot of fun. It is tough to make those, those stunts work, though. It isn't as simple as some of the other action sports games out there at all. It's no Tony Hawk Pro Skater, let's face it. It's not so much that you can't perform these cool moves and flip out the bike and and do the no hand, well, the, like the Superman. It's just hard to land. But the thing I really love about this game is all of the different paths that you can take. Yeah. You can pretty much go anywhere. They even have a black diamond trail that you can go and progress down. That and you I get more points get more and more, points. more extras and stuff. One thing that bothers me, though, yeah. is that you'll be in first place, and then all of a sudden, you're in, like, ninth place. The, the, you, you know, the it's catch like up is you really... fall once, and it's like, boom, and yeah, they... it gets frustrating. This is a great game. I'm, I'm going to give Downhill Domination 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 as well. On the positive side, this game has some of the best airtime and gives you that total sensation of speed. The graphics, environments, and tracks are unbelievable. The combat is really cool in the game, especially when you stick a yak in the ass. On the negative side, sometimes the AI catches up to you a little too fast. The tricks aren't that hard to do. It's just very hard to land them after you do them. And finally, there's a guy named Teabag in it. Today on the show, we took a look at Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy for the PC. We love the lightsaber combat in the game, especially being able to hold two lightsabers at the same time, but the graphics were a little bit dated, and the whole game kind of felt more like an expansion pack. On the GameCube, we took a look at Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Now, this is a fun golf game for the whole family, but if you happen to play Mario Golf on the N64, this one doesn't really feel like much of an improvement. For the Xbox, we took a look at Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. This is an incredibly deep and addictive game with awesome production values, but some people, like Tommy, might have a problem with the turn-based combat. On the PlayStation 2, we looked at Downhill Domination. This game features amazing speed and absolutely incredible environments. The only thing we didn't like was that some of the tricks were a little bit hard to pull off. In hardware, we looked at Pelican's Trick Controller. Now, this controller's got that cool one-button combo thing going on, but the buttons on the face are poorly positioned, and the controller's still larger than the Xbox S controller. On the Game Boy Advance, I looked at Advance Wars 2. This is an amazing strategy game. I was completely addicted, but I gotta say, fans of the original might not see a whole bunch of improvements here. Well, that's all the time we have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.